I'm Edie Lush and I'm outside the iconic Ice House and I'm here with the creator of the Ice House, William McDonough, also known as the father of the circular economy, the author of Cradle to Cradle. You know, Bill, we've spoken many times and one comment that you've made to me, nature doesn't have a design problem, people do. Talk me through that. Time Magazine called me the hero of the planet in 1996. And they started by saying, I have a unified philosophy that in demonstrable and practical ways is changing the design of the world. And they said, so what is that philosophy? I said, it's nature. Nature doesn't have a design problem. So when we think about nature, we have waste as food. So everything is in cycles. So if we emulate that, we'll be improving our own design. So this, for example, is a design of a thing mm -hmm. that can be taken apart and used over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And well, it has been. It has been. It's Every single year, the same years. building comes back. Same building. And it yeah. packs down into small A 20 boxes. foot container, yep. Right? Yeah. So, and it's based on nature. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, the idea that uh, it can be, uh, in this case, we call it a technical nutrient. Mm -hmm. So it's like you'd have in biology with carbon going back to the soil and becoming a plant with the addition mm -hmm. of carbon and energy from the sun. This is a case where energy has been used to make aluminum, to make the walls, to make these things, and they're embodied in it, but we get to use them over and over again. And that's really the key to technology, is that it's for human purpose and use. Mm. And wouldn't it be great if we could use it over and over again? Because nature gives us sources of material. Mm -hmm. Humans have to make them into resources. So we can't say nature is full of resources. Mm. Nature is full of sources. We take them and then we turn them into resources so we can use them over and over again. I don't need to go back to nature mm. and destroy it to get more material. Why aren't more people doing this? I will not name names, but I've heard stories up and down the promenade of companies that have built, in, built entire edifices for January, Davos, which was then canceled due to COVID, they had to dismantle the whole thing and throw it away. That's a loss of money to them. Yeah. Why aren't more people doing what we're doing here? It's an odd thing about humans that we have a difficult time discovering the obvious. <laughs> so what you're describing is obvious. Wouldn't it be better not to have yeah. to tear all these things down, throw them away? Because mm. the obvious thing is that away has gone away. We used to throw things away. Mm. Where is it? Right? Now that we see the Earth from outer space, there is no way. So mm. we're designing to be here. And you know, this building actually has uh, cultural references in it because if you see the cornice mm -hmm. and then you see the other buildings here in Davos yeah. with their cornices, mm -hmm. so it's part of a family. Mm. So it's not some thing Random from outer space. Drop down. It's actually, it looks like a Swiss watch that's inside out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what are the new features that are, are here this year that are unique to, to, to because it does evolve. It is like yeah. nature. It evolves and it responds. And based on our experiences over the last few years, you've added a couple of extra things this year. Well, we've had the privilege of being supported by Sabic, mm -hmm. uh, which made the materials here that um, they donated and they're the, the sponsor of this physically. And Sabic has now developed a solar collector mm -hmm. that's made from very thin materials that uh, low embodied energy mm -hmm. that are solar collectors. So we've put solar collectors on it. So this is now solar powered ice house. I love it. Yeah. I love it. You know, this is like a, a wrapper, a packaging for humans. Right. Consumer uh, packaging is something that I know that you're, you care a lot about. Here's the fact that I found that is really extraordinary. 90% of materials end up in landfills or natural ecosystems. Consumer supply chain accounts for 45% of global emissions. Surely this needs to also go away, this fact, right? Well, the opportunity is so immense mm. that when you, when you think about it, people have been trying to deal with these issues and we call it extended producer responsibility. Take responsibility for what you're making and where it goes next and so mm. on. So we talk about designing, not just for end of life, because that scares children, mm. But we talk about designing <laughs> end of use. Right. And once you start designing for end of use like this, mm -hmm. what's the end of this use? Well, this week, mm. I finish using it. Yeah. Well, what's the next use? So I design for next use. Mm -hmm. So this building is not designed just to be here mm -hmm. for hub culture for a week, 
six years ago. It was, we're going to use it every year. Mm -hmm. So design for next use. And I think that's what we can look at all these things. So we're designing packaging and we know that it will either be recaptured as polymers that are valuable mm -hmm. or metals, mm -hmm. or it should be safe enough to go to the biosphere without any contamination mm -hmm. or microplastics. And mm -hmm. So that's a design philosophy. It's cradle to cradle. And we can apply it at every scale from the molecule mm -hmm. to a building, to a city, mm -hmm. to a planet. And so it's like a fractal. It's self-similar at every scale. So as you bring up packaging, if you want to say, well, let's do packaging. This is human packaging. Mm -hmm. This is human packaging. Mm. See? Clothing yeah. is packaging for humans. Yeah. So packaging has the same issues whether you package a human or a banana. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all one thing. Yeah. And so you use the same philosophy of waste equals food mm. and just reuse everything. How hopeful are you? You know, COP26, depending on how you look, look at it, was somewhat of a success, but not enough of a success for us to declare game over. In this slight, this is not an infinite game. We do not have forever right. to fix the, the planet. We have a very short time frame. I know you're a hopeful and optimistic person, but uh, tell me, give me a sense of how urgent you feel now. Well, the urgency is tremendous. And I think our only hope of the youth, really, and I think that's appropriate. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I remember Kenneth Boulding, the economist said, anybody who thinks you can have exponential growth in a world of finite limits is either a madman or an <laughs> economist. <laughs> and uh, uh, you can't, we just yeah. can't, we have limits. But I think at the point where in history, and the thing I appreciate about Glasgow was on one hand, the idea of saying net zero to me is, it's, it's, it's about being less bad. Yeah. So net zero bad is what we're talking about. Mm. So for me, that's not the most helpful thing you could say to somebody, mm. that my goal is nothing and you're making my life difficult because you're trying to be something. Yeah. I mean, that's hard for the kids. But the great thing it is for the kids is that it gives all of them their assignment and says they're, they're authorized to proceed mm. to net zero. Mm. So their job, like we, we saw with the space program, when John Kennedy said we're going to the moon in 10 years, mm. 1960, he didn't get to live to see it. Mm. But we went to the moon in nine years. And I did NASA Space Station on Earth mm -hmm. design. And uh, the average age of the NASA engineer that put Neil Armstrong on the moon was 28. Mm -hmm. Which means that over half of the design team that put him on the moon, when they heard Kennedy say we're going to the moon, were in high school. Right. They didn't know you couldn't do it. Yeah. yeah. So for the young people in the world today, Net zero is a goal. That means be less bad. And we're apologizing. We've been bad. Right. We're sorry. Right. Help us. Mm -hmm. Help us remove all the badness that we've created. We didn't intend to do it yeah. and we don't like it. But now your job is to be 100% fabulous. Right. Right. So let's try to be 0% bad and 100% right. fabulous. And that's for the youth to do. <laughs> right. Get on with it. Right. That's it. So Glasgow is a, a real water mark on that one. A real right. uh, the watershed event. Um, Bill McDonough, thank you very much for coming along. We really appreciate it. And thank you for your continued partnership here in Davos. Thank you. I'm Edie Lash.